What's up, guys? This is Adi from Gate 7 International, checking in with the first deep dive of the summer of 2023 for Olympiacos. And today we're going to be covering Vicente Ibora. He is the first signing, and he's going to be coming hopefully with a couple of other signings. We have Kini and a couple of other names that could be mentioned this week. As always, once they're announced, the deep dives will follow, the data will be collected, and we'll go through all of those players for you. First and foremost, before we go into the deep dive, before we really address what's going on with this player, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Help us continue to grow the community. The support we've gotten from the current audience has been fantastic. This thing continues to grow and get bigger and bigger, not just on YouTube, but on audio and on social media platforms. So become a part of the mission. Help us grow this community so that more and more people can discuss the team and the club that we love. So thank you, everybody, very much for doing that. It take, costs you nothing, takes no time out of your day. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, so that way you can be notified further of anything that we do. Now, without further ado, let's get started on the player that has been the talk all over social media, Vicente Ibora. He is 35 years old, which is a subject that has been a very hotly contested and something that a lot of fans have not been happy about. He's 35 years old, older than Jan and Vila, a player that a lot of people see this as a replacement for. He is a defensive midfielder, Spanish origin, and an, he's an enforcer. Gattuso, Hurtado, Delvin Indinga, Guillerme. I mean, this is the, the, the profile of the player and in terms of his attitude. He's a guy that's going to be out there commanding control, not necessarily in terms of distribution, but physically, mentally. He's a player that you would expect would be important in derbies at, at, at that rate. Regarding the player's attributes, he's a big guy. When I was watching tape of him in the Segunda Division, he just looked like a giant compared to some of the players out there. Not to say that they're shorter, uh, in Spain, but he, this guy is just pretty big, six foot three, 190 centimeters metric, 80 kilos, or for the non-metric people, 176 pounds. This is a solid human being that occupies the midfield. This guy isn't a joke. He's a big boy and, uh, not the type of guy you want to be going against regarding the profile. Expect to see him for Olympiacos in a deep-lying role. It seems that he has some leadership capabilities. I know it's been reported in Greek media that he it's somebody that Martin he's somebody that Martinez has used in the past for those abilities. I've seen fans of these uh, of other teams that he's played for comment on that. He's a commander, uh, a leader for everybody and we know how important especially at this club at Libyakos, those locker room presences are. So that's another th reason he's being brought in as uh, somebody that Martinez can relay information to, and he can get that out on the pitch. He's also a set piece animal. That's something I'm going to get into a little bit shortly, but shouldn't surprise you given how <laughs> big this guy is. Now I did want to address the controversy surrounding this player. I know a lot of you are very unhappy with the club signing an old player, especially considering that it's been said in media in Greece that the goal was to make the average age younger, and then here we are signing a 35-year-old player. All I can say to you guys, and I'm going to bring in all of this context when the deep dive is over, the rebuild is not instantaneous, and there are going to be some things, some exceptions to the general rule. Regarding the bigger transfers that are happening, Gordon himself said, that the best deals will be done in August. So have some patience. I will elaborate on the conditional value of this signing at the end of the deep dive, as I always do. And for those that are complaining about Ibora and whether or not he's a replacement for Jan and Vila, again, I'm going to elaborate on this during the video with a side-by-side -side comparing of some data from Jan and Vila as well. But I want to remind you all that a lot of you made the same complaints about Mvila in regards to being a Guillerme replacement. And now here we are having the same kind of complaints about this guy being a replacement for Jan Mvila. I'm going to go through all the context. I'm going to evaluate the value. 
and you guys will see my hear my opinions later also. That will all be revealed. Then we can have a discussion about whether or not we made a mistake signing this player. But until then, I just want you guys to keep an open mind while we go through, at the very least, some of the data with regarding the player. To finish the profile of the player, I already told you guys er, a little bit earlier, he's a no-nonsense defensive midfielder, an enforcer. He's pretty sure-footed. Not going to stay on the ball for more than one or two touches. So don't think like Guillerme, who could take the ball forward, carry the ball forward. Not like that at all. Not even like a Jan and Vila, who was a, a central point of distribution for us, both him and, and Huang. Um, this guy's going to get take maybe one or two touches on the ball when he does have it, just to get it out to the person that should be getting the ball. So uh, I- expect, in in my opinion at least, I, I see this guy as a he'll get the ball, and either if he's not getting it out to the wing, he's going to get it directly to Huang or maybe the 10. That's how it's going to play out. He's not going to look a lot downfield. He's great at reading the game, especially on the defensive end of the ball. We're going to elaborate on this as we go through some of the data, but that's something that you will enjoy from this player. He's a true GM in that sense. So something that you love to see and something that we're going to get into uh, very shortly. So as something that's going to be changing with some of these deep dives, I've learned since last summer how to evaluate data a little bit more specifically, not just bringing in side-by-side comparisons to players, but also evaluating the player on a percentile basis uh, on a per 90 minute, of course, compared to everybody else in the league. So this is all of his data from the last season in the Segunda division compared to all other center mids and DMs in the Segunda division. We'll start with goal threat. Goal threat, something that might surprise some of you is uh, he actually has a pretty solid XG per 90. Uh, his goal, his direct goal threat shots on goal. It's something very interesting that I wasn't at least expecting. But of course, now that I've told you guys how big he is, maybe it doesn't surprise you at all. But outside of those set pieces, you're not going to see a lot of goal threat from him. Both goals that he scored last season were off of set pieces and his most threatening opportunities off of set pieces aren't the direct header off of the the corner kick or the 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 free kick it's going to be off the second or third ball following those set pieces he's a daunting presence in the box i know i've brought this up before and his giant stature just sees him create plenty of opportunities for himself even with those direct headers this is going to be very valuable for us in derbies because we have seen us struggle on with set pieces over the past couple of years. And in derbies as well, it just seems like we, we one, can't do much with set, set pieces, and we also suffer against them. So the fact that we will have a guy that is like this, this frame, this daunting, and this aggressive, this is very valuable for us. Um, if he does see a shot in open play, it's going to be at the top of the opponent's penalty area, 20, 25 meters out, kind of like what Jan and Villa has done for us this past season. But he's not going to be super dangerous from there. The, the The core thing to take home from the fact is that this guy's going to be important for set pieces. Assist creation also more or less non-existent. Not usually his role, or at least it wasn't last season, He's the target man on set pieces. This guy's getting in the box and the ball's going to him to try and get his head on it or get in, in, in a scuffle to get in there and get the ball on the goal. So this doesn't surprise me at all. Maybe in Greece, we'll see an occasional assist here. He actually does have a, a pretty nice chip over defenders that can get forwards into danger. That was pretty cool to see. So he has that in his toolkit, but it's not something I'm expecting to see with consistency. I didn't see it with consistency in the film I watched from last season. So the it's pretty straightforward here. Goal creation wise, this guy underperformed his XG because he gets a lot of headers, a lot of opportunities off of these set pieces. Regarding build up in possession, again, I, I brought this up earlier. He's very straightforward with the ball at his feet. There's not really much trickery to speak of, so don't don't expect to see a player like Huang Mbaum who is press resistant, who can just turn, get doubled down, tripled down, and dribble himself out of it. No, you're not going to see that. This guy's going to dribble on anything. He's going to use his 
gigantic stature just to push people around. And that's what he prefers to rely on. And he's a warrior. Won't be a central figure in buildup. At least he wasn't in the film I watched. Not shy to get the ball, but he gets rid of the ball pretty quickly. Progressive action wise, also he's not a leader. So don't don't expect him to be getting us forward with the ball. Hasn't been a role he's had in a long time. Not something I'm expecting him to do for us either. Pass accuracy is pretty solid, and his understanding of of his fundamentals and fundamentals generally is pretty good. Positional awareness more than adequate, despite being a little bit slower. I know there were a lot of complaints that you guys had about his slow pace, but his positional awareness is fantastic. He always finds himself in space when, when the ball's going forward. He wants to get the ball, but he knows his limitations. He stays within his skill set. This is something that when we did uh, the interview with Peter Filipakos that he talked about Tasos Pados. Uh, a guy that knew his skill set, knew what he was good at, and stuck to it. That's how this guy is. He's not going to try to nutmeg anybody, step overs. At least I never saw them. He's going to get the ball, collect it, one touch, two touch, and that's it. Ball goes where it's going to go. Usually not too far away. He's not going to make a lot of long passes, but that's the type of player you have from him. So I brought this up again a little bit earlier. When he gets the ball, I expect him to try and get the feed the ball to Huang when he can or the 10, maybe get it wide here and there through the overlapping wing back. That's about what you're what you're getting build up wise from this player. Defensively, this is the part of his game that has attracted Olibiakos to this player. While playing in Segunda Division, he looked like a giant on the field. I've said this a couple times already. I just can't reiterate how big he looks. It's it's actually incredible. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of the last player we bought that was a field player that was this massive. Reads the game well, uh, as is evidenced by his high interception count. Uh, it, it's very surprising also to me that he has a pretty low incidence of defensive duels. You guys can see that here in the chart in in where it is his def defense is defensive duels one he's in like the 12th percentile and initially that was surprising to me because for such a big guy such an aggressive defensive guy i expected him to be getting into more duels and he is pretty good at winning them but he doesn't get into a lot of them and when you watch him play you see he's directing people and he's always closing the lane down so he's not usually going to be the first person going into something but he is going to cover the lanes to stop it maybe it speaks to his leadership role directing others to challenge things I, that's kind of where i'm leaning but that's just how it's been um it's not for lack of physicality as i brought up because this guy he doesn't shy away from anything i mean he's going to get into tussles again a very very valuable trait for us a guillerme trait like in derbies We'll get into people's faces, and because he's such a big guy, I can't imagine a lot of people are going to want to stare him down. Regarding other defensive traits, he does help out a lot on defense. You you guys can see his shots blocked here. I mean, he is in the 90th, over 90th percentile uh, in the Segunda division. This guy gets very involved with the defense, and this is something that I believe we will find value in, especially given how porous our defense has been recently so having somebody that's going to be able to pick up some of that slack especially the more suspect components that we have back there i think that's something that we're that we really need that's something that we really need to help with the, also the fact that he's i brought up he's an animal on set pieces this isn't just an offensive thing he's an animal with set pieces defensively too so this is a this is a player that's really going to help us out and cover there and, and help us in those cases, situations, set pieces that we've struggled on both offensively and defensively to kind of solidify things. This, this is really the, the player that that's here. Pretty straightforward. The, the data here is nothing too crazy. It kind of tells us the things that we expected, in my opinion, but it, it, it tells us something, which is very important. Now, the next part is I know the part a lot of people have uh, been asking about, and that is the, the comparison with Jan and Vila. So here's a radar chart kind of comparing 
the two. Now, remember, guys, these radar charts, they are based on percentiles. I have the actual values of the, the data here, whether it's carries, passes, what the actual value is. But you might notice in a couple of cases that the that a player may have, like the smart passes, for example. Um, Ibora has a, a higher level of smart passes per 90 than Jan and Vila does, but Jan and Vila's web is higher up percentage-wise. Well, that's because in the Greek league, 0.07 goes further than 0.08 does in the Spanish league. So just keep this stuff in mind. But the web... It does give you kind of an idea about the player and the difference, the really difference of player is Jan and Vila, we know, was an engine of possession for us. And the point of this web is not to tell you guys that, oh, and Vila is a better player than Ibora. We shouldn't have given up in Vila. That's not what I'm trying to tell you guys. This is a different player, it's a different profile. A, a different, just like Jan and Vila was not a direct replacement for Guillerme, Ibora is not a direct replacement for it. For Jan and Vila. These are two different molds, two different profiles, and they're and they serve two different purposes. Jan and Vila came in, we wanted one thing, but then we got something else. We got somebody that was actually more important for our buildup than I think we expected. Versus Ibora is not a guy that's coming in to be our, our buildup guru. He's not a guy that's gonna come in and have 60, 65 touches a game. Not no, not at all. That's not the purpose that he is going to serve on this team. And that's what I want to show you guys here because. Yes, Jan and Vila, as far as his progressive actions goes, as far as his, his distribution ability, the quantity, the volume, yes, it's higher. Yes, in that respect, it is better. But that's not why Ibora is being brought in. He's not being brought in to replace Jan and Vila. He's being brought in to cover a, a different aspect of things. This is a quick fix to cover other issues that the team currently has. So remember that. When you guys are talking about Ibora versus Jan and Vila, we also price is a is a, a point of comparison here too. Jan and Vila was making over two million a season with Libyakos. Ibora is not making nearly that much. Now, all of that in consideration, it's it's we really we really need to come to terms with with a couple of things here. I brought up earlier that. Martinez is making a quick fix. And I brought up also that Cordon has mentioned the best deals will not happen until August. Training has started. Martinez is kind of seeing the core that we've got going on at Olympiacos, what he has as a disposal with his friendlies. And we've talked about this on the show time and time again with regards to what the team has and what we need. We all said we needed at least, at least one six. And we do. We do. This is a six. It's not as young as a lot of people want. I understand that. But I believe that with, with certain context, we have to, we have to hold judgment on this transfer, not just this transfer, the, the transfers that are coming this week, the other ones that people are complaining about, Kini and you know some of the the older the older players coming in, plus the striker that is supposed to be coming in that scored four goals in about a decade. But that's something I'll touch on in a a future scouting report with Ibora. The the real determination of whether this signing or whether this was a good signing for the summer will come at the end of the summer. I don't believe this guy is being brought in to be a day in day out started. I don't believe that. I believe he is coming in because Martinez needs, he needs to bring in some players that he trusts and he needs to fill a couple holes pretty quickly. We know that we have a hole at the six. We know that we have that. He's bringing somebody in that he trusts, that he knows is a leader, and then he knows is a fighter. This guy played almost 40 games last year in Segunda. He clearly has the stamina. I don't, I don't think he's going to play that many for us this season, but I think he will play. I will he will play some important games. He will definitely play early on, maybe to get us into the Europa League group stages to get through those qualifiers. But I do not see this player as the day in, day out starter at the sixth position. I, I really I really don't see that. 
he is a guy that can can get on goal. I mean, look at the comparison, his XGXA in comparison to Jan and Villa. I mean, he is he does see more of the ball, more touches in the box because of of how prevalent he's going to be on set pieces. It's something that we haven't really had from a midfielder in a while. And we haven't really had a towering presence like this besides defenders in the past. So this is going to be something different, uh, but something that we that we, in my opinion, need. Again, I need to make that clear that my opinion right now on this signing is based on what I believe is coming. That's why I'm having a little bit more patience. This isn't going to be the end-all, be-all at the six. I believe there's another signing coming in the midfield position. I That's what I believe. I don't see us sticking with... Just Huang and him and Bukalakis. Maybe, maybe Agi Bukamara gets converted. I could see that as well. That wouldn't surprise me. But th this isn't the, the day in, day out starter. If you're panicking that we're bringing a 35 year old as, as a starter, do not. This guy is a locker room presence. This guy is, is, is there to help and also get us through some of these stages. He brings great experience. This guy has an incredible CV. He has seen a lot of Europa League. He has seen a lot of cups. He brings very much needed experience to us, both in the locker room and on the field when he does play. Again, I'm going to reiterate. If this is what I believe it is, and it's a signing to fill a gap and to help us kind of Band-Aid patch something for the deals we're expecting to make in August, I am okay with the signing. I see value in the signing. We know we have to bring the wage, the budget, the wage down. Between Socrates and Envila, we that's probably five million in wages on two players. This guy's not going to be making nearly as much. He fills some defensive holes that we need, and he brings some experience that we're losing with Jan and Villa. We know Madi's not coming back. We need something just to get us through the summer until we can get to August. Help us with qualifiers. If that's the context for the signing, I'm having patience and I'm fine with it. Is there? There's no resale value with this guy. It's all about value for the team. In that respect, I see value on the team. I don't think this is a bad signing. I'm not upset with it. And I don't think you guys should be either. Now, by end of August or by end of transfer window, if we haven't made another signing, we don't have any other solutions at midfield, okay, fine. Maybe I'm starting to panic a little bit. But that's also going to come in contact with some of the other signings that we need. It's too early for us to say what shape Cordo or what shape Martinez, sorry, is going to take the team. We've only seen one friendly. We don't know enough yet. We we know that he's going to make this team play how he thinks he can best fit all the players. That's what he's done at other teams. That's what he's going to do here. He's also going to make adjustments based on the teams that we play against. I still, I, I vehemently believe that Ibordo is going to be a situational type player early on. I expect heavy usage until we make some of those signings, but I believe he'll become a situational player, maybe to help get us through some derbies, maybe to help, fill some gaps when we need to rest players between Europe, between the league and the cup. That's how I see him. And if that's the case, again, I am not panicking about this signing. I think it's a fair signing, especially because we haven't had a player with this type of aggression, this type of attitude since Guillermo in the midfield. So all in all, my verdict is, uh, it, it's a it's a pretty low risk signing. If again, if this is in the context, I believe it's in free transfer, low wage. It's there's no resale value for the guy, but he's going to fill a role. Conditionally, we're happy as long as this isn't the only signing being made here. This will be something we revisit towards the end of the window, like we always do when we make more signings when things come in. We'll evaluate and we'll see what we think about the transfer window based on all the signings that come in. But for now, I'm not panicking. 
I think this is an okay signing. I'm not super excited about it, but I understand why the signing is made, and I hope you guys do too. It is really important that right now we trust the process. If I'm being honest with you guys, I'm not super confident we will achieve even a title win this season because rebuilds take a long time. Now, maybe maybe there's a disconnect because I'm a diaspora Greek. With sports how they are here in the United States and, te- and how teams have gone through them in American sports, rebuilds take years. This is a project. If we don't have success in, in, in this year, I, I, th- I believe Kosas Liano said it in the most recent episode, we have to have patience. We have brought in Cordon, and we have Martinez. These guys are not idiots. They're brilliant. And these guys are brilliant when it comes to managing the game and brilliant when it comes to finding talent. We need to trust the process and see how things play out. This signing, amongst Keeney if he comes in, and some of the others, we really can't judge them until the season end, or season end, until the transfer window ends, really to see if we addressed all the needs. And then again, we can't do a lot of judgment until the season goes forward. This is this is a rebuild from the ground up. The best we can do, the best I can do here is look at some of the data, look at the profile, and kind of guess at this point where I believe it's going to go. Bringing that all back, once again, I see a player that will fill a role as long as the future signings address what I believe needs to be addressed. So... I hope that answered all of your questions. I hope that my patience and my willingness to accept this signing gives you guys a little bit of ease because I I, I think that this is a signing that we need in context with what should be coming. So I hope you guys enjoyed the deep dive. There's more coming. Again, every signing that comes, everybody that signs for the club, we will evaluate just as we have done in the past. The context of this season is a lot different because this is a complete rebuild. And this is our first time really addressing things in a summer of a rebuild, especially since the start of this show. So it's going to be a new experience for you. It's going to be a new experience for all of us. So I hope you enjoyed the deep dive. I hope I was able to answer your questions. You can always DM me, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. If you have any more questions about the data, about the player, other players, feel free to reach out. Please, again, like and subscribe. Follow us on all social media channels if you like the content you see. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when more shows are happening, more deep dives, which are going to be coming. I have a feeling the club's going to keep me very busy. But if you enjoyed it, please stick around and hang out and join the community with us. Chat with us. Engage us. We love it, and we love hanging out with you guys. I'm Adi. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. We'll see you next.